So here's a problem that's unique to a piece like this. I need to be able to screw from underneath this flange into the bottom of the top to hold the top in place. And I'm going to use these big number 14 three inch screws. Here's the problem. In order to get in with a screwdriver, I have to come in at quite an angle. I can't come straight up because this curved side is in the way, so I gotta come in at an angle. Question is, how do you drill that hole for the screw to come through at that angle? So here's the solution I came up with. I took my adjustable bevel and approximated what that angle should be. And then I took my screwdriver and held it up here and figured out about where the hole has to come out of the bottom for me to be able to put a screw up through. Measured that, made a little drawing of that on my scrap wood, and then figured out how to make a little jig here to guide my drill from the top side down through this flange and come out the right place on the bottom. And so, you know, a little bit of math, a little bit of drawing, and I think I've got that figured out. So I'm gonna clamp this uh, guide into place and then come in with my quarter inch uh, drill and drill the holes. And if everything calculated out right, the hole will come out about a quarter inch in from the edge of this flange and that'll be the right position. Looks like it worked. Well, it's time to attach the carcass for the altar to the base, and it's getting too heavy for me to lift, so I'm going to take advantage of this tool that I bought back when I was in business, and it's a, a rolling lift. So it's got wheels on the bottom. You can move it around. Great for moving big, heavy tools and things, and it's got a hydraulic jack, so I can jack this up to the height where I need to install the screws without having to bend over. And I've already marked on the base approximately where this goes. And so now I can just go ahead and put the screws in and I can roll this around and I don't have to be lifting it anymore. Well, what you're looking at here is the carving for the front of the altar turned upside down, sitting on a couple of blocks with a bunch of bottles of paint on top. And you might ask, Andy, why did you do that? Well, if you recall back from the videos on how I made these carvings, I put four layers of veneer on the back of the altar carving. And that was to hold together all these little stems and lavenders up here so that they didn't all break. And I made the layers such that the grain uh, just beneath the lavender was vertical. And that would be two layers of veneer. And then two layers of veneer on the very back back, which were horizontal. Well, the problem is that when I put the glue onto all the veneer layers and the glue soaked in, and it's a water-based glue, it's type bond three, uh, it caused uh, the veneers to expand a little bit. And then I put this all into the vacuum bag and the glue set. And so the veneers that were vertical, um, they were kind of locked in position. They, they wanted to shrink back, but they were pretty much locked in position because they had this veneer on the back at right angles, you know, preventing it from, preventing them from shrinking down. The result was that we got some warping in the panel. And um, the, you know, from the back, the warp was, was like this. 
And so when I put this on the front of the carcass for the altar, the edges here would stick out. So to relieve that stress some, um, what I did was I used a utility knife to score this back veneer through the two layers enough where they weren't preventing the shrinkage of the inner layers as much. And um, that helped to straighten this out quite a bit. But I thought, well, as long as I'm not working on this right now, let me let time work a little bit in our favor. And so I put these bottles of paint on here to press down on the middle here and help uh, flatten this some more. And when I put my straight edge on here, these, these are relatively flat now. So um, that'll help me to attach this and not have it trying to, you know, look warped on the front of the, of the uh, carcass. Uh, I'll go ahead and sand all this down nice and pretty before I'm ready to put it in place. Well, you remember back on the carving videos when I carved uh, the, uh, the altar carving, um, we had lavender, mountains, and the, uh, what we're calling the trinity, it's a, the knot. And, uh, but everything kind of blends in, same color, it's all cherry. So I had coated this with a couple coats of, uh, of, of semi-gloss lacquer, some deft, and uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some glazing on the lavender to, to bring it out some. I had made a sample board. This is just a section of the carving on some uh, scrap cherry that I had. And I did a little experimentation. Uh, I did some gold leaf on the, the, the Trinity symbol. But uh, on the lavender, I painted the stalks, I should say I glazed the stalks with a greenish color, a little bit of brown thrown in. And then on the, uh, the lavender buds, I used different shades of purple, uh, typically with a darker shade background and then highlighted it with a little lighter shade on the flowers. And I tried different versions over here as a dark, a very dark purple and then over here is a lighter purple and so I kind of like this idea so that's what I'm going to do I've got some glazing medium which is just a semi transparent kind of um, fluid that kind of thins out the artist colors here's some artist colors this particular one is the purple and it's acrylic and these colors uh, some of them are transparent some of them are not um, supposedly the transparent colors work best for this but I found that it doesn't really doesn't really matter so I'll mix up various shades of this and using some nice brushes I have I'll, I'll brush on this color to make what is rather plain stand out a little better Well, I'm maybe done with the painting. I'm not sure, but I decided to go ahead and attach, attach this and see what it looks. But let me show you what I did with all the flowers. I did various shades of a base purplish color. And then over that, I did a lighter shade on the petals. And then on the petals, I actually put some lighter dots Kind of hard to see, but 
a little more contrast. Maybe that's the best one to see it on. A little more contrast, some lighter dots. So you basically got three different colors in there, which gives it a little depth, I think. <clears throat> and then uh, I wanted to bring out the mountains and the carving a little bit, so I put some white caps on it, which is really typical here in the Olympic Peninsula. And I think we're going to probably leave the rest of the wood as is. I was considering gold leaf on the, the Trinity, but I'm not sure. Kind of like the look of the wood. But anyway, looks like the painting is done or close to done. Well, we got the top set on top of here. Now I'm putting the screws in. Thank goodness for this lift. Prevents, prevents making me bend way over to find these screw holes. 